Hello everyone, I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal and this is the complete camera guide to the iPhone X. There are several ways you can launch the camera on the iPhone X. First of all, if you just tap on screen to get the lock screen, you can swipe to the left to bring up the camera. Also from the lock screen, there is a button down here which if you force touch, that will launch the camera. If you've already unlocked your iPhone X, again there are a number of options such as launching the camera from here as usual but you can force touch there to get more options and also from the control center let's say you are currently in an application if you bring down the control center there's another option here again force touch to get multiple options when opening the camera application to take a quick simple picture tap on the shutter button here but if you prefer a physical button the volume up button here does the same thing but one thing to note, if you do take a picture in landscape, make sure that the volume rocker is at the top or you may take a picture that's upside down. Also note that when you take a picture, it will make a shutter sound noise. You can turn that off by switching the silence toggle here. So now when I take a picture, it should be silent. If you want to focus on a particular object on screen, simply tap on it and the camera should refocus to whatever object that is. If you want to check the exposure level, tap on screen, you'll see a sundial next to the box and then you can drag that up and down to change the exposure. Now if you wanted to lock both focus and exposure, tap on screen and hold until you see at the top of the camera AEAF lock. So now neither focus or exposure will change even if you change the camera camera position around. To turn this off, simply tap on screen again to reset it to automatic mode. The iPhone X does have a dedicated optical 2x zoom lens. To enable it, simply tap 1x there and then you can get some nice blur effects or shallow depth of field. You can also zoom in even further by turning the dial but once you do that it goes back to digital zoom so you won't get quite as good quality. To take multiple pictures very quickly, in other words burst mode, tap and hold the shutter button. Now when I go to my gallery, it will show burst mode pictures with the number of photos taken here. To select one picture from the burst mode, go to select and you'll see a slider at the bottom here so you can see different pictures or simply swipe left and right. If I tap on the circle down here, I can select multiple pictures. And then when I tap done, it will ask me if I want to keep everything or only the favorite pictures that I selected. Also note, if you turn on the timer at the top here, whenever you take pictures, it will automatically take 10 burst mode shots, just like that. If you want to record mini videos whenever you take a picture, one and a half seconds before you press the shutter button and one and a half seconds after, that's live mode, you can toggle it on here. So now, when I take the picture here, if I go to my gallery and then look at the live button here to indicate this is a live video, I can then look at the still picture but force touch to see the live photo behind it. On the camera app, if I swipe to the left, I get portrait mode, which can do some very funky things with different settings. So for example, if I want to take a picture of Mario here, this is going to look very fancy once I go into the gallery, like that. So give it a try and see what you can do with it. It also works in the front facing mode. So now if I look at the camera, hopefully this might work, but the camera is kind of in the way here, which doesn't help. So you might have to try it without all this equipment and obviously out in the wild to see what it looks like. But those are two very quick demonstrations. Have a play with it and see what you can think. As you can see here, it's completely blurred out me, but the camera is nicely in focus. And of course, that's just the new feature, Portrait. There's plenty more options, including square photos, panoramas, and if you swipe to the other side of your regular photo app, you'll get video, slow-mo, and time-lapse. So make sure you give all of those features a try in the camera application. Now this next feature isn't in the camera app, but it certainly does use the camera, and it's an emojis. So if I send a message to somebody and tap on the App Store, the second option here looks like a monkey face, but it gives you plenty of options to choose different types of faces, from a robot to a cat to a dog. And now it's looking at the front-facing camera, and as you can see, as I raise my eyebrows and shake my head, it's recording all this. So I'm now going to press the record button. It is recording me talking now. When I press stop, press the record button. It is recording 
recording me talking now when I you can preview it and then send it to your friend or whoever as an, an emoji. Now one extra thing you can do here, once it's sent, if you tap on the actual an emoji, you can tap on the share button down here and save it as a video to your own photo gallery. Now if you want to change any of the camera settings, you don't actually do it through the camera app. Instead you have to go to settings and then scroll down to the camera and you'll find all the settings here. As you jump in and out of the camera application, it will reset itself to default unless you select the preserve mode. For example, if you exit while it's in panorama, it will switch back to photo mode, but you can stop that from happening by toggling this on. Same for the portrait mode, as you mess about with those settings, it will default itself once you exit it. And live photos, again, you can toggle that on and off if you're jumping in and out of the application and you want to preserve your settings. Other options include the grid, which will split your camera into nine different boxes with two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Another option you also have is the scan QR codes automatically. So when I have a QR code in front of the camera, you can see that it automatically brings up the link of that QR code and I can tap on the notification to jump straight to Safari to see what that QR code is all about. Out of the box, your iPhone 10 records at 1080p at 30 frames a second, but you can change that all the way up to 4K resolution at 60 frames a second. It helpfully lists how much average storage space that will take up, so bear that in mind if you are changing the camera settings. You can also use similar options for slow-mo as well, which records 1080p at 240 frames per second by default. One more thing about recording video, if you're in any mode other than 1080p at 30 frames a second, it will show you in the camera video app at the top right what mode you're currently in, but unfortunately you can't change it here, you would have to go back to settings. There are two different camera formats, those include high efficiency, which is a default, takes pictures at HEIF and HEVC formats, but for most compatible, which takes JPEG pictures, you can switch it on there if you need to. Finally, we have the Auto HDR option, so this will automatically try and take HDR pictures for increased quality, but if you want to keep the normal photo as well from those stitched together pictures, you can toggle it on there. You can set a key photo for your live photos if you want to. In the photo gallery, tap Edit, you can then slide across the entirety of the live photo, and when you let go, you can see Make Key Photo. So now that is your main photo when you're in the photo gallery. A couple of other editing features you can do with live photos is trim them if you need to, and you can also crop them by tapping the crop button there. So we'll make it smaller like that. You can also crop the picture. So if you go to edit and then tap on live, this would now be me cropping the picture rather than the live photo. Another thing you can do in the edit section of live photos is quickly mark it up by tapping this button here and then the markup option. This will now give me a certain number of stationary tools like pencils so I can draw on the live photo. You can also add quick effects to live photos as well if you swipe up on the picture. So now we can change it to a bounce, so it's going backwards and forwards. We can also change it to a loop if we wanted to. And another option is to do long exposure. Now the problem with this particular picture is that it'll just look like a big blur, but this is to be used with water effects, such as a waterfall. Try it out in the wild and see what happens. You will be delighted to know that the iPhone 10 supports animated GIFs such as this one of Captain Picard despairing. You'll also be delighted to know that all animated GIFs are put into their own folder and it's called animated. You do have the option to turn images into watch faces for your Apple Watch if you have one. To do that, tap on an image, then the share button in the bottom left and finally create watch face. Although my logo doesn't quite fit on a square watch face. Hmm. The iPhone X can take raw photographs if you need that sort of functionality, but you can't do it through the built-in camera app. You will need to download an application from the App Store. There's plenty available. And that's your complete guide to using the iPhone X camera. This is just one of the many guides I'll be doing on Apple's latest smartphone, so make sure to check back soon. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the Video Gadgets Journal for more content just like this. Enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now.